Our 2021 consecration has began and last started last week Wednesday and you still have time to join us. This week we will be fasting until 5 o'clock p.m. and we will have a, a light meal afterwards. We want to call your attention, your heart, your mind, your spirit to come in to pray. And you can join us on YouTube or Facebook every Monday at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 7 p.m. I will be looking for everyone to join me tomorrow as we pray during those times. But I want you to find your time where you can steal away at least 15 minutes a day and give God personal time, reading his word, supplicating him, making your petition known. We're going we're to preach a word today that's going to show you what it's going to do for you. Our consecration diet instructions have been sent to all of our mem members Friends of Perfecting and PCT, please check your church's fake Facebook, our church's Facebook page, or call our church office for all of the information. We love consecration time because we know that God will honor our sacrifice. I want everyone to participate. We praise God for the opportunity and for all of these wonderful people I receive your letters and how wonderful they look and how well they sing, and we praise God for them. But we have a special announcement here. Uh, I want you to see this. It is a uh, book of from DTE Service, and it has our own Mary Thomas on the front. She's she's. She has a mask on, She's, but we appreciate her. And it says that she, um, it talked about what, what, what did you, you were the what of the year or month or week? Or? I had the most plus ones. That, now that's what she had. Let's, let's deal with that. Plus ones after calling and uh, our contact center, customers are randomly selected to participate in the DTE CARES survey where we ask if they are satisfied with DTE. If they say yes, we ask if DTE did anything to go above and beyond their expectations. If the answer is yes, then that rep receives a plus one. That is how it is earned. And here's what it says. Her strategy works. Mary received more plus ones from customers than any other call rep in 2019. So she not only sings, but she's nice. So we praise God and we congratulate her. Amen. 
Let's go. There's a name I love to hear Soothes my doubts and it calms my fear And I love it all It's a name that gives me so much pleasure You can make it rain in the middle of a desert I love to say Jesus Yeah Jesus Oh how I love I love, I love it all Everybody say Jesus Jesus Yeah
fourth chapter. My, 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 my. The thirteenth and the fourteenth verse. Hear the beginning of the reading of God's Word. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. So far the text. We will extrapolate our subject from the 14th verse. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Would you grab your neighbor by the hand, look them in the eye, and repeat our subject. Say, neighbor, the power, the power. after the fast. After the fast. Yes, sir, the yes, sir. power after the fast. Some people <laughs> and other religions, they also have times of fasting. But the fast that the Lord calls the fast that involves the saints of God, the people of God, the church of the Lord Jesus should have a different outcome. As I stated, we are not fasting to lose weight. We are not fasting for health benefits. And that may be, it, 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 it will. I mean, if you, if you lay some of that down, you're going to feel healthy. I'm not trying to diminish that. But there is a different impetus there. There's a different cause and reason why. And I want us to have the same motivation, if you will. That I'm coming to God. I'm stealing myself away. I'm shedding myself from the regular duties and commitments of the day that I might spend time with God. 
And one of the reasons that I need to spend time with God is because I am not content with the present level of power that I am experiencing in my walk with God. I want you to know that you don't have to settle for mediocrity in your life with God. And as we search the annals of history, we can find that those persons that made a commitment to seek God with purpose, to be introduced, as the Apostle Paul says to his letter uh, to the church in Philippi, and that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. There should be a desire to exhibit, not for the purpose of lifting oneself up, but the purpose of lifting him up. And I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His power does not diminish, not one iota. His power does not abate. He does not lose power. He is the same. And the reason we don't see the display in our lives is because we have covered it up and we have become, as Jesus told Martha, you are encumbered with many things. There are a lot of things that we we pull on and we put on and that we latch ourselves to that will not allow us to seek God for the power of God to be seen in our individual lives. Lean on your neighbor and remind them of the subject. Say, neighbor, the power after the fast, after I have sought God, I am not looking to stay in the same range of ability. I want to level up. I want to, I want to know, hallelujah. And it comes out of having a deeper relationship and a deeper commitment with, with Jesus. He is alive. I need to say this, that we are not serving a dead Savior, we're serving a risen Savior. We're not going to a cabal. We're not walking around a rock. We're not at a dead grave site. We serve a risen Savior who is in the heavenlies now making intercession for us. We got to come boldly before him. <laughs> We have to know that he exists, for he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Jesus, our example. In the third and the fourth chapter here, the Bible says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. I want you to join us this Tuesday because we're going to talk about the suffering because of Christ. But listen to me. This Wednesday, I want you to be with me. A lot of folk would have a problem with this verse. Because it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, returned to Jordan and was led. By the Spirit of God into the wilderness. If we felt the Lord leading us into the wilderness, we would be rebuking the Lord and calling him to Satan, come on out. I ain't going to the devil woman. 
the Spirit of God led him into a wilderness. That's, that's the reason we have to be careful when we misappropriate faith. Because there are those that will teach if you have faith, you don't ever have to have a wilderness. You don't never have to do that. Stop teaching that. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because it's not scripturally, it is not sound. The Holy Ghost led Jesus into a wilderness. And the purpose of being led there, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. So Jesus fasted. It was intentional. <laughs> he fasted and went through a time of wilderness. He didn't have any of his disciples saying, Jesus, you could go through, you could make it. Jesus, Jesus, he's our man. If he can't do it, no, he, he didn't have none of that. He didn't have a choir. Jesus, just go through. I just made that up. That's not a song. Don't look it up. He had none of no nobody. Mary couldn't find Mary, couldn't find Joseph, didn't have any disciples. Are you listening to me? It was a wilderness experience. And the Holy Ghost led him there. Oh, lift up your head. Lift up your head. Some of you going through a wilderness experience and you're trying to figure, where's God? He's right there. Yeah. He's the one that led you into it. Now, get out your pen. Get out your paper. Learn the lesson that he's trying to teach you. And in this fast, Jesus was in the mountain. Here's the point. I know most of you know this text, and if you don't, read it. But I just want to hit a couple of points. It says that he fasted, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Jesus, the Son of God. More appropriately, the bread of life is now hungry. I said the bread of life is hungry. Because he has not had a morsel of meat, not any bread. So afterward, he's hungry. And it's right there. You have to be careful. Because when you're walking around full of strength, vigor, vitality, them, the enemy is selective. But he'll approach you when you're hungry. He'll come after you when he knows that there's an emptiness. Oh, I'm teaching to somebody here. There's an emptiness. And fasting, by its very nature, causes an emptiness. It causes a longing, a desire. And that's when the devil makes his appearance. That's when he makes his grand entrance. When you've laid some things down and afterward you're hungry. Appetites don't just go away. Just because you haven't done some things in a while doesn't mean that you still don't have the appetite. Just because you quit for a couple of weeks 
doesn't mean you don't have an appetite. I'm talking to somebody. How many diets have we tried? How many New Year's resolutions have we made? I'm cutting this out my diet. I ain't going to eat that. No, I ain't. No red meat. Uh, I'm not eating any cake. And we do good. But it doesn't mean that we lost the appetite. And then, lady, I thought you weren't eating no more red meat. Well, I cooked it, so it's not red. It's brown. It's dark. We find every, every excuse. The hunger represents a longing. It represents something that has been missed. Something that was there, but is no longer there by choice. Oh. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm saved by choice. Yeah, I went to church and I felt something come over me and I... Ooh, I was just overwhelmed. I went down there and somebody was praying. I just felt such joy and I ended up joining the church. But then when I got out in the car, I said, what's wrong? Get yourself together. <laughs> Snap out of it. Tell somebody I'm saved by choice. I wake up every day wanting to please God. You got to wake up saying, I want to do what God... That Appetite might be right there, but it's a choice that I'm going to follow God. Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, but afterward, hunger. And so the devil tried to take advantage of his weakness. And came and said, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. What is amazing here is that in the absence of eating, the devil thought he could command Jesus to do stuff. See, when you live out of your emotions, and live out of your desires, then your desire will demand that you feed an appetite that God has told you to get rid of. Tell somebody I'm saved by choice. Yay! And so the devil comes and he tries to tempt Jesus in his state of fasting by saying I'm going to challenge your identity by saying if you be the son of God and I'm going to challenge the circumstance that you are in because so many people want to say that if you're saved you shouldn't feel that. If you're saved, you wouldn't desire that. If you're saved, you wouldn't have that appetite. Tell them I'm saved, and I'm saved by choice. And the fact that I know I'm saved is because I'm, I have a desire for it, but I'm hungered. In other words, I haven't fulfilled that desire. If I was having my own way, I wouldn't be hungry. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Man, Jesus answered and said, sir, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. This is the reason that fasting should be an integral part of a believer's life. Because I can't live by the bread alone. I don't hear nobody talking to me. 
Notice what, Jesus, what God told Israel when they were going into the land of promise. He said, you're going to a land that flows with milk and honey. The representation here, the hyperbole, the hyperbole here, is the fact that God says you're not going to have lack. It's going to flow with every natural, carnal uh, desire and, and thing that you need in order to have a satisfied life. It's going to flow with milk and honey. Here Jesus uses bread and says man shall not live by bread alone. Those things that bring satisfaction. It's nice to drive a nice car. I wish I had an amen. I said it's nice to live in a neighborhood where you ain't got to hurry up and get out the car. Y'all ready? All right, go. Whew. Run into the house because you're scared, and then you got to put on 20 locks and five bolts and then uh, have a, a camera. It's wonderful to go in the neighborhoods where folk at night run at night. Jog. They ain't, they're not fearful. I don't hear nobody talking to me. It's nice to have a, a summer cottage or a winter home. It, it's just nice. But that ain't all you need. Man shall not live by bread alone. But when you're saved, you live by every word. <laughs> every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Oh, I feel like preaching here. This is the reason it, it is notable in what Job said. Job said, to his wife, he said, baby, it, it, it was foolish of us to think that we would receive good from the hand of God and not evil. But he goes on to say, I have learned in this relationship, therefore I esteem the words of his mouth, the words of his lip higher than my necessary food. Because I cannot make it by bread alone, but by every word. I need God to speak to me. There has to be a proceeding word. There has to be a revelatory word. There has to be a rhema for my life. And the only way for me to get there, I got to fast. Oh, yeah. I got to put up some time where I come away from those things that my flesh desires and I find myself in the presence of God talking to God. Now, when that happens, I already know I'm going to be hungry. I already know that there are some things that's going to be gnawing at me, pulling at me, you know? Donuts. You don't even eat donuts, but you're going to see donuts. And they're going to look like, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, that you, you want me to have donuts. No. The appetites. But how do you remove the appetite? You rebuke it. And you rebuke it with the word. I found it. The word found me. I ate it. And it was the joy. I promise you. I promise you from experience. And I know we fast. And I, but listen, I grew up where when we fast, you didn't eat nothing. You didn't drink. Nothing for days. That's, that's the fast I've been on. I remember after passing the church, I needed to get away just to, just to pray. And I went to, to Arizona. 
on a 21-day fast. And word got out that I was fasting, and, you know, I was by myself. I just had some water, and then I got some juice, and that was it. And every three days, I would drink the water and even just fasting, praying. It was a wonderful retreat place. I'd go and uh, go to the, to, to, to the cafeteria where they had a piano. It was a, like a camp, and I'd go there and play the piano and write some songs and come back, read my word, take my walk. Oh, it was just wonderful. And word got out that I, I was fasting and praying, and this old man that owned the camp, found me. He said, yeah, you know, I asked him, you've been here about 15, 16 days, you haven't eaten anything? I said, I said no, no, sir, I, I'm fast. We thought for sure you'd get some pizza or something to take out. We didn't see any delivery. They were actually looking to see. Because people don't take the time to fast. To seek God. To lay stuff aside. Afterward, you're going to be hungry. Unless you get the victory. How do I fight that hunger that wants to be fed? I have to take the word of God. And I promise you, you can read that word until it fills you up. I promise you, I have been hungry, but then grabbed my Bible and went to study in the Word. And when I finished, the hunger had left. Because the word is meat indeed. Jesus. And I'm closing. Jesus gained the victory. But when he finished, the devil ended that temptation. And he went from him for a season. When Jesus came out of the mountain, the Bible says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. See, that's why we're fasting. That when we come out of this, we'll have more power. Not, 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 not our own power. We won't have our heads all big. We'll have humility because we'll recognize that it's God that worketh in us. Both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus returned back in the power of the Spirit. I want you to know when you have power, you don't have to try to convince people you have power. You don't have to run a power campaign. You don't have to put ads out on telling, I have power. All you got to do is return in the power. Because the power will speak for itself. The power will have you tell a lame man, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Power of the Spirit will have you casting out devil. Power of the Spirit will have you laying hands on the sick with the expectation that the sick will recover. Tell your neighbor the power 
after the fast. Yeah, it's not just going to be that I'm lighter by 10 pounds. I'm going to be heavier. When this fast is over, I'm going to have an apparent anointing and a glory that is on my life that everyone around has to recognize. Are you listening to me? When Jesus returned out of that mountain, that mount of temptation where he went in to fast, after he returned in the power of the Spirit, his fame went out. You don't have to say I got it. Folk going to know you have it. Folk going to know you have the power. Lord, I feel the dance. I said folk are going to know you have the power. So I want you to concentrate. Get your mind on God. Let's finish this fast strong. Hallelujah. We want the sick healed. We want evil diseases cast out. We want a church that the power of God rests upon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for all that have heard this message today. that the purpose of this fast would be single. That they would want the power of the Holy Spirit to rest upon them in an obvious way. The Spirit would rest upon them in a very conspicuous way. That they don't need to brag on themselves. But during this time of fasting, we have humbled our souls. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for who you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the power of the Spirit be upon us. We're fasting and we're praying that no other light be seen but the one that beams from thee. Hallelujah. E flat. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give ourselves for dedicate our lives to reach the loss no one of the thing but the one that be from me we consecrate we sanctify purging ourselves we purify that no light be seen but the Let's say that all again. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. We give ourselves for your cause. We dedicate our lives to reach the Lord. but 
those are the words that I need to hear. Well, 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 well. We consecrate. We consecrate. And we sanctify. We sanctify. Purging ourselves. Purging ourselves. We purify. We purify. That no Come off this fast with power. Thank you. If you don't know the Lord, you can find him now. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I give you my life for the rest of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, have your way. Oh God, this time, this consecration, thank you, Jesus, that when we finish this fast, we're coming out with more power. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you received Christ today, please email us with your contact information that we might walk you through this to salvation at perfectingchurch.org. That's salvation at perfectingchurch.org. Thank you, Jesus. I feel a weight coming off. Hallelujah. This is our year. I believe that. I want you to get a seed of $100, all of you that can and will. Great things, great things, great things, great things. Say that with me. Great things, great things, great things, great things. Great things. Hallelujah. Great things, great things. Father, take these seeds that are sown cause them to blossom in our lives let every need be met we cannot live by bread alone but every word that proceeds out of your mouth bless these that have sown as they sow carnally they will reap spiritually in the name of the Lord Jesus which is not as a debt I owe, but as a seed I sow. Please stay in the cyber sanctuary after giving that we might give you some more news. Perfecting Church Toledo has two ways to give. You may give to PCT by cash app at dollar sign PC Toledo. Please add your name, address, and contribution designation in the notes. Or you may mail your contribution to Perfecting Church Toledo, 4609 Glendale Avenue, Toledo, Ohio, 43614. We pray God's manifested blessings upon you. Thank you for your support to Perfecting Church Toledo. Good morning. It's time for the Perfecting News. Consecration 2021 continues this week. Fasting daily with one meal after 5 p.m. We will gather virtually for prayer with our pastor tomorrow at 6 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube and each Monday thereafter. PCT, this is our time. God will honor the sacrifice. Let's commit to 2021 being a year filled with the Word. Plan to meet every Wednesday in Cyber Sanctuary for Bible study. It's just what you need for the week. Join Perfecting Church Toledo for worship on our YouTube channel. And remember, you can also view past videos there as well. Contact our offices at 419-382-1300 if you require any additional information. May your week be blessed. 
thank you, PCT, for your support to Perfecting Church Toledo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look forward to praying with you on tomorrow at noon, 7, 6 a.m. Meet me on our YouTube and Facebook page. We give ourselves for We keep on fasting and we consecrate. We sanctify. Father, keep us, keep us in your word. Keep us during this time of consecration. Let us not give in to the appetite, but let us eat your word and find our strength and our joy. In Jesus' name, for we may never know all people we have touched. For we may never lives that we have reached but we know you know and the rest Spread them all.